Hey, wonderful people. Thank you very much for checking on my YouTube channel. I really appreciate you coming on this channel again. And I want to thank everybody who made a comment on my previous video about African in diaspora and Africans in the motherland having that conversation, that conversation. There is a song that I want to just give a snippet of it. I went through a teacher training college and I went to the Presbyterian training college. So this song, I think, is for the Presby churches. So it's, it goes like this. Asembi aramikano Adibi aramie Anka esesemi bisa Sebe in English, it says, whatever I do, whatever I say, I have to ask God if this is the right thing to say or if this is the right thing to do. I believe that this is the perfect time for all of us I think I saw somebody passing. Okay, it's my own shadow. I'm even scared of my own shadow. I'm not scared, but we are in a, um, I mean, a beautiful world, so anything can happen. So in the quest to change the narrative, do we have to allow people to tell us the story or we have to say it ourselves? There is this slogan that Wadamaya usually says. He says, I'm, 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 I'm a village boy from Africa, Ghana, traveling all over the world to change the narrative. So the narrative would have been written by someone who didn't have any experience living in Ghana, in Africa, or in the U.S. So changing the narrative isn't only about Africa. It's about wherever we find ourselves, where we have to change that story. But the question is, Africans may not know much about the culture, history of the African diaspora. In the same way, I feel the African diaspora or the African American does not know much about Africa. In this sense, I am one person from Africa who has the experience, so the, the narration of the story may be different. Are you ready? If you're not scared of being in the camera, then I am availing my platform for any African diaspora who is ready to also teach us Africans the story, to teach us your history, to teach us your culture. I know people say African Americans don't have culture. I think that a culture is a way of life a way of life. So if our way of life is this particular thing, then I believe I would say that the African diaspora, the African Americans have a way of life. Just that it may be different and it is different. So I am you know, offering my platform for any African diaspora who is ready to have a one-on-one -on -one with me just to share their story because um, I have, when you go to my analytics, okay, on YouTube, you realize there are five major countries that regularly watches my video. Talk about United States of America and then Ghana. UK comes in, Canada comes in, and I think South Africa. And then India, I don't know what these Indians are looking for, but I have Indians there. Okay, so we should be ready to share these stories together. Now, there is one thing that I want to talk about. Anna, I said Anna. I thought I was speaking my language. Anna, mo wanza me bebrebi wawa me peda me kwa sam. Ofa no kwa na inye ni na yaba fado ne yesu ya aze afa inye ni na yehu. Now, the first one is that I believe the very first item to look at when we want to look at the fact that we want to start this conversation is by Africans in diaspora 
looking at ways and means of having friends, making friends with Africans in the motherland. There are people who come to Ghana and they are like, Echo, I don't know anybody. It's because I watch your YouTube video. That is why I'm coming. It's only you that I know. Even at a point when I have to pick them up at the airport and I say I may not be able to come. They're like, Echo, you know, it's you that I, because I see you and I've, I've spoken to you and I understand. So I believe that the very first point of this conversation is by having friends or families in Africa. That is how I see it. This is coming from my perspective, my narrative. Because the moment you have a friend or you have a family in Ghana or in Africa that you constantly have this conversation with will open up a lot for you to learn. So in my own perspective, we can sit on the internet, read books, watch videos like I'm doing, which is very, very relevant, um, go to seminars and everything. But I feel like the first point of contact is to make friends with a Ghanaian or a Nigerian or um, a Kenyan or somebody from Africa. Because the constant communication, I do communicate with a lot of people. Sometimes they watch my, um, apart from my YouTube, they, I post a lot of stuff on my status or my TikTok. So they see things. And when they see it, they kind of ask me questions. Echo, why is it this way? Why did you say this? Why did you do that? So in my own perception, I believe that Africans in diaspora should look at, I mean, this is in two parts. Africans learning from African diaspora and then vice versa. But today I am talking about my brothers and sisters taking the first lead because we believe that we are already here and we are ready to welcome you. So we have to look at the ways and means where we can start having a conversation between ourselves. And this is one major thing, like what I'm doing right now is a major thing. But I am saying that let's go further to have families and friends in Ghana. Now, how do you go about having or making friends in Ghana? What do you do? How do you go about it? Personally, I have spoken to my father, my mother, my, me, my family, and have encouraged and had that conversation that, our brothers and sisters are looking for a way to come home. But most of them don't know where to go. They don't know who to go to. So my father and mother, my father is now very old. Uh, lately he acts funny and I think is old age. Um, two days ago, three days ago, I had a conversation with him. Because when I came to Canada, uh, his phone, I don't know what is wrong with it, but I had a chance to talk to him. His birthday, I wish him a happy birthday. He couldn't respond. Old age. Sometimes we have to take him to the hospital and blah, blah, blah. And that was the first time I told my dad, I love you, because I haven't, we don't do that in Africa here. No. You see the culture? This is the culture. This is, this is the conversation, some of the con conversations we need to have. Like, we barely talk of, in Africa, we barely say, I love you, dad. I mean, it's weird. It's, it's not, it's funny. It's, we don't say it. Even we don't say, I love you, mom. Even our siblings, we don't say, I love you. Unlike, you know, I mean, I watch videos and I see how in Europe and in, in the West, you guys can easily tell your dad, I love you, dad. I love you, mom. We don't really do that stuff here. And that is a culture. So when you come and you do that, we may look at you like this. But if we have that conversation, then I understand why you're doing that. So, you know, I told him I love him, and then he was like, I'm called Nana, so Nana, hey, Jew, I'm, I'm very happy hearing you saying this. I mean, from, from your mouth telling me you love me, you miss me. And I almost shed a tear because, you know, I mean, that's one of those things. So I believe that, like I said, I've had some conversations with my parents, and they are open to say that, okay, 
you are coming from the USA, from the UK, from Canada. You don't have any connections in Ghana. Fine, we are ready to accept you as a family. So one way is by contacting YouTubers who you trust that they can lead you to having families in Ghana. Secondly, I know in August, somewhere in August, I watched a video where they had a program called Ghana, Ghana Month or something in Toronto. And these are some of the events. If you're ready to connect with Africa, you can easily go to and try to talk to people. The Ghanaians are so hospitable and receptive. They don't, they are even happy that you're coming to you're coming to me. I will be maybe at such an event, and then you come to me and say, Hey, I call. let me give an example. Shout out to your brother Greg. Greg, you're from the USA. I think you are in Kenya right now. You're married to a Kenyan. You're having a good time. He's he's he made a contact with me, and since then we talk. We used to hang out when he was in Ghana. We used to hang out, and I know he's learned a lot. I remember I made a video. He he sent me a text and said, "Echo, do what you gotta do." I know my people. We are yet to learn. Some of us are learning. They may not understand you, but go ahead and do what you're doing. So far as what you're doing doesn't affect anybody negative, negatively, go ahead and do it. So, Greg, I remember 2019 or 2020, there, there, there was a program in Accra called um, uh, Afrochella. So I was just, you know, doing my thing, making videos. And then I heard someone calling me, Echo, Echo. I turned back, it was Greg. This dude was like... He came and hugged me. I was like, yo, I watch your videos on, on, on this thing and blah, blah, blah. And I see you and I want to come to you. And since then, we've been like this. I watch his status. He talks to me. We chat sometimes. And it's like he's learning. I'm happy for him. He's married to an African and he's happy wherever he is. Maybe one time, Greg, if you're watching this video, one time I would like to put you on to share how you were able to overcome that negativity, how you were able to start that conversation. And now you're, I know you're very happy. So events are places where you could also meet Ghanaians or Africans and just communicate, just talk to them. Just go there and say, hey, um, my name is maybe Greg. I, I would love to know more about your culture, your, your people, what are you guys doing here, what is it about. And then you exchange contact and you start talking to people. One other way is, I know wherever you are, whether in the USA, you may have African friends. You may have African friends. Contact them, talk to them, start that conversation with them. Let them tell you how it is for them when they were growing up in Africa. How are things done here culturally? How are things done here with the lifestyle of the people? How do we do things? They'll be very much happy to tell you because I, I'm, I'm, I'm always happy when I'm talking to diaspora when they come to Ghana and I pick them up from the airport and we have to drive around and we have conversations. Sometimes I take them to the beach because one of that, like I said, event place, beautiful place for you to connect with Africans. One other place that I will also urge you to look out for African friends is on Facebook. I mean, let's take it like social media. Social media is another place where you can connect with Africans. Let me give you an example. Go through Facebook. Type anything that has to do with Cape Coast, my beautiful city, Cape Coast, which I don't play with, Ghana, Accra, Kumasi, whatever. You just type it in the search box. You find a lot of people who have made videos about Cape Coast, Accra, Ghana. Study the terrain. Look at the person. How did they do it? What are they saying? If it is relevant to you, you can just start following the person don't, you can decide not to start a conversation. Start following the person. Watch the videos that they put out. Especially, I'm talking about people who make videos that are relevant to you. 
and then start watching them. Just read what they say or read what they post, what the videos, and start making comments. When you start making comments, I mean, hello, so why did you say this? Why is this this? The person will come back and put up a comment and explain. The more you have this kind of interaction on social media, it builds you up. In a way, you can even tell your friend, hey, I have a friend in Ghana. They'll ask you, who is that? How did you meet him? I met him on social media. We talk and stuff. That is another way. Before I travel, I've been to about, I think, nine African countries. In 2008, I decided, no, 2018, I decided to start traveling. And guess what? My first travel, I took a loan. This is a secret that most people don't know. I took a loan from the bank just to go to Kenya. <laughs> it's funny how we started this journey. There are a lot of things sometimes we want to talk about, but we feel it's so you know, private and we don't want to go there. So I took a loan from the bank and I traveled to Kenya for the first time. I knew nobody. The only person I knew was on Facebook. His name is Paul Victor. I didn't, I didn't know him from anywhere. But because I made up my mind to travel the first time out of Ghana, I was like, okay. I went on Facebook and typed Kenya, travel to Kenya, teachers in Kenya, um, social media influencers in Kenya. I was just putting these things up. And then I saw this guy. He was mainly posting about youth programs, you know, NGO um, youth coming together to clean Kenya. So I was like, let me start following this guy. So I started following him, and then I started commenting on what he posts. And then I sent him a message on Instagram, whatever. I was like, hey, bro, uh, my name is Echo. I'm from Ghana. My first time I want to see Kenya. I love Kenya. I think that's my first country. I've been watching stuff. And he was so open to accept and say, welcome to Kenya. And that was when the communication started. And truly, when I stepped foot in Kenya, he picked me up and introduced me to about 10 or 15 younger brothers and sisters who are still into NGO stuff. And that is what I've been doing. Look, if you watch my YouTube videos way back, you realize that I build a library for my school. I do a lot of things for the kids in the school and all that. It's through um, social intervention. And that is, this is, these are some of the things that these guys were doing. So I was happy when I got there. They were like, they sat me down. It was like a round table. And um, they sat me down like, okay, tell us about Ghana. I was telling them. I had tattoos on. They were like, so what's the meaning of this tattoo? I had Edding Crass symbols. They were asking me questions. And I felt like a king because I made the right move by searching, narrowing my search to finding someone like him. And it was, it was so marvelous my stay in Kenya. Then, within that same period, I was saying, nah, no, I, don't, I just don't want to go to Kenya and come back. Tanzania is very close, so why don't I do a search? I went online and posted on Facebook that, is anybody here who has a connection in Tanzania? And one of my mates from senior high school said, hey, I know this brother, he posts on Facebook about travel to um, tourism in Tanzania. Let me connect. I spoke to this guy, connected with him. He was my next connection. So I had to pick, after a few days in Kenya, I had to pick a bus from Kenya to Tanzania by myself. 2018, my first trip ever, by myself. I met this brother at the station. He took me in. The first thing we did was to sip a beer. I mean, what I'm trying to tell you is that making friends, trying to make a contact with someone in a different country to learn, to start a conversation is very, very important. And he took me around. So my first trip ever out of Ghana, I used one bed to kill two storms. So then I started getting the experience in traveling within Africa. And then Togo came in, Benin came in, um, Rwanda came in. Ethiopia came in. How many have I mentioned? Where else did I go? 
And then, I mean, Dubai is not part of it. I'm talking about Africa. So there is that we have to start that journey. We have to forego that, that negativity, that don't be scared. Let's go for it. Let's go for it. Let's go for it. So these are some of the videos that I'll be making. I'm going to explain it with my personal experience, how I got to start the journey of traveling, of starting a conversation. Now, if I go to Kenya and Tanzania, I'm well done. The same way with um, 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 Ethiopia, we went online, my friends and I, we found this guy on couch surfing, very good guys. So there are good people out there that we can create this connection with. Let's do that. Let's do that. And it will really help that begin that conversation we are looking for. So if you're ready to share your story, my email is in there. My WhatsApp contact is in there. Let's have that conversation. Let's start something. Let's start talking. And I'm ready for anybody who is also ready to share the, the culture. Uh, this is a positive vibe. We are not looking at negativity coming here to say African, the African. No, I want us to look at what is the typical lifestyle or the culture or the history of the African American so that we can also learn from you because I want it to be direct. Because I want it to be direct. I want it to come from any of you watching my video. So like I said, put up a comment. Um, let's, have, let's start that conversation. I'll bring you on and then we talk. We talk, we start doing this, we start doing this. And I want to say, like I said earlier on, shout outs to all those who commented on the previous videos. All your comments were, were awesome. It was beautiful. And it gives me the, the vim, in Ghana we say the vim, the morale, the vibe to keep going. Thank you very much for checking me out. My name is Echo Simpson. I'm a YouTuber from Ghana here, just around to check what's happening here and then bridge the gap between Africans in the motherland and Africans in diaspora. Peace out.